Hello and welcome to News Review from BBC Learning English. I'm Neil. Joining me today is Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Neil. Hello, everybody. Now, a question. Does wine taste better when it's spent some time in outer space? Well, that's what wine experts and scientists have been trying to answer. If you would like to test yourself on any of the vocabulary that you hear in this programme, there is a quiz on our website at bbclearningenglish.com. Now let's hear a clip from a BBC interview with the wine writer Jane Anson talking about wine she tasted that had been in space. What happens with this kind of wine when they get older is you get lovely floral aromatics, truffle aromatics, so like, you know, violet, peony, all that kind of stuff. And that was more obvious to me in the wine that had been in space. So scientists sent 12 bottles of the fine wine Chateau Petrus out into space. The wine spent 12 months on the International Space Station. Now, when the wine came back to Earth, the scientists said it tasted better because it had matured. That means the flavours had developed quicker than they would have done if the wine had stayed on Earth. This is part of research into sustainable agriculture and scientists are now working out what it is about outer space that has this effect. OK, well, you have been looking across the media at this story and picked out three words and expressions which are useful for talking about it. What have you got? Yes, we have top notch, savour and pouring over. Top notch savour and pouring over. OK, let's have a look at your first headline then, please. Yes, we are starting with Euronews and the headline Chateau Petrus does a taste of top-notch Bordeaux really taste different after being in space? Top-notch. Excellent quality. Yes, so a two-word adjective here. The first word is top, T-O-P. The second word, notch, N-O-T-C-H. They are joined together with a hyphen, so top notch. Yeah, now top, I assume everybody knows what top means. Notch. Now, a notch is a kind of mark that you make in a piece of wood, isn't it? So yes. what has that got to do with wine in space? I will tell you. So a notch, like you said, is a little groove that you cut out of usually a piece of wood. Now you might do this if you've got kids and your kids are getting taller and you want to record their changing height. You'll cut a little mark into maybe a door frame or something to show that they're getting higher and higher and higher. And of course the top notch would be the highest notch on those on that um, group of notches. So if something is top notch, it means it's the best. Right, it's at the highest level, I suppose. Now, this expression is pretty informal, isn't it? You wouldn't uh, see it used in uh, official government documentation or that type of thing. No, or not in sort of research projects or anything. It's very much um, used in spoken English. But it's the thing it is, refers to is things that are the best of its type. So top-notch wine, you can talk about a top-notch sporting performance, you can talk about top-notch food. Yeah, what what must be top-notch for you, Catherine? You know, what some things we don't mind buying cheap and cheerful, do we? But sometimes, sometimes you want something top-notch. What is it? For well, you? over the years, Neil, I've wasted a lot of money on poor quality vacuum cleaners. <laughs> and when the last one broke, I said to myself, that's enough. I am getting a top-notch vacuum cleaner. And I did that and it's been completely reliable ever since. Money well spent. If Catherine's camera was at a different angle, you could see just how spotless her floor is. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's get a summary. If you are interested in stories about space, we have a great one for you about SpaceX and NASA. Where can our lovely viewers find it, Catherine? By clicking the link. OK, let's have a look now at your second headline, please. Yes, we're in the UK now with Sky News. The headline, experts save a £4,000 bottle of wine that spent a year in space and reveal what it tastes like. 
savour, enjoy in a slow and deliberate way. Yes, lovely verb here, savour, S-A-V-O-U-R. Now, if you're reading this in American English, it would be spelled S-A-V-O-R. But we're in Britain, so we use that U. Yeah, savour, similar sounding and looking word to flavour. And it might be useful to remember them together because it's often used to talk about food, isn't it? Yes, you can savour the flavour of something that you're eating, in fact. If you savour something, you really enjoy it very slowly and deliberately. So if you're really, really hungry and you just grab something that's, you know, not very nice and it's cheap and you just want to fill that hunger, you don't savour it. But if you're spending a lot of money on really expensive food in a lovely restaurant or maybe you spent a long time cooking your favourite meal, you're going to eat that food slowly. You're going to enjoy every mouthful. You're going to maybe have some nice something nice to drink with it. You're going to take your time and enjoy. And if you take your time to enjoy something, you savour it. Yeah. Now, often, as I said, used about food, but we can also use it to talk about experiences in general. Yes, of course. Yeah, you can savour anything that's kind of really enjoyable, really special, really important, perhaps quite rare, something that doesn't happen very often. Yeah, you might be uh, at a concert, your favourite band or singer, and it's getting towards the end of the concert. You're feeling a little bit sad because you know it's going to end and you just try to enjoy every single second to really yeah. savour the experience. Yes, you don't want it to end. You're enjoying, you're taking it all in, you're looking, you're watching, you're smelling, you're listening, everything to enjoy that experience. Tell you what though, Neil, you'll be savouring your next time you get to see family and loved ones when the lockdown ends, won't you? Absolutely. Really appreciate it because it's been so, so long. Yes. Okay, let's get a summary. So we've looked at the word savour and its connection often to flavour, something which I find delicious, mango. Mm. Uh, we've got a story about too many mangoes in the Philippines. Where can our viewers find it? I don't know if you can have too many mangoes, but here's a story about it. All you have to do is click the link. OK, now let's have a look at your next headline. And now we're in the United States with CBS Miami. The headline, scientists poring over results of experiment to blast wine into space. Poring over, looking at something carefully and in detail. Yes. OK, let's look at the spelling quite carefully for this one. The spelling is two words, P-O-R-I-N-G, the second word, over, O-V-E-R. Now, you'll notice that in the headline, pouring has a U, but we're going to look at the version that has P-O-R-I-N-G. This word, pouring over, means looking at something in very great detail. You're examining it really slowly. You examine it very carefully to find out as much as you can about it. Yeah, this is not just about reading something, even reading something which is interesting. If someone is poring over something, they are really looking at the detail. So yeah, studying, really studying something very closely and very carefully. So in this case, they've got the results from their wine tasting and they're looking really carefully at the results from the wine tasting experiment to learn as much as they possibly can from it. Yeah. Now, somebody who's got an exam uh, the following day may pour over their notes. Yes. Um, detectives would pour over the evidence in a criminal case. Yes. Yeah. When they're trying, if you're trying to solve a crime, every last little bit of information is could be really, really important. So you look very carefully at all the evidence. You pour over it. So you've explained about uh, pouring over there, Catherine. But in the headline. The spelling of the word is different. It's got a U in it. Have they made a mistake? 
No, they haven't. This is, a, or it's a deliberate mistake, if you like, because this story is about wine. Wine is a liquid. When you take, move liquid from a bottle into a glass, for example, the verb is to pour, and this is spelt P-O-U-R. So it's one of those clever, journalistic, headline writing word games that they like to do. Pouring over means to examine in great detail but they've used the spelling of pour as an in a, in a liquid. It's just a, a word play. That's what we call a pun. Yes. OK, let's get a summary. Time now, Catherine, then just for a recap of our vocabulary, please. Yes, so we had Top notch, excellent quality. Savour, enjoy in a slow and de deliberate way. And pouring over, looking at something carefully and in detail. If you want to test yourself, check out the quiz on our website, bbclearningenglish.com. And you can find us all over social media. Thank you for joining us and goodbye. Bye.